I think, you know, the task, I think for us is to fight for democracy. We need democracy reforms. Take ballot access in response to, uh, in this case, libertarians. You know, the Republicans are saying the libertarians spoiled the election for Trump. At least some of them are. So Arkansas, for example, raised the ballot uh, petition requirement. And Greens now in Arkansas are scrambling to get their petition in before that higher standard takes effect. And then here in New York, it was the Democrats last year who tripled the number of votes we need to stay on the ballot, double the frequency we need to get them. And then if we lose the ballot, we need to get 45,000 signatures in five weeks to get back on the ballot, which makes it about the highest, hardest standard in the country. And this is the home to the democratic socialists who work inside the Democratic Party. They've been totally silent on this thing. And I don't think they realize, most of them, that without a strong independent left, they got no leverage inside the Democratic Party. You know, people are demonstrating all over the country right now in support of the Palestinians. You think Biden cares? They don't. It's, you know, people will demonstrate to go home and Biden knows most of those people are gonna vote for him instead of whatever the right-wing Republican comes up in four years. So we really got to fight for uh, really federal legislation to have a fair ballot access standard for all federal elections. John Conyers used to have a bill in the late 80s and up to the late 90s. And it would be a fraction of what we now have to get to get on a ballot. And you got to realize this country is off the charts and how hard it is to get on a ballot. You want to run as an independent or a new party candidate. In most states, it's thousands or tens of thousands of signatures. In my state, it's 3,500. You got to get in that five-week window. In uh, Florida, it's over 10,000. Illinois, it's over 15,000. Uh, Georgia, over 20,000. Alabama, over 30,000. Indiana, over 40,000. You want to run as an independent for the House of Commons in the United Kingdom? 10 signatures. You want to run for parliament as independent in New Zealand? Two signatures. Australia, it's 50. Canada, it's 100. Unless you're in one of those northern, really rural districts, it's 50. And here it's thousands or tens of thousands. So, you know, the U.S. likes to say they're the leader of democracy. They're not. They don't allow choices. And the other problem is winner take all elections. Single member district plurality winner. So whoever gets the plurality gets all the power and everybody else gets none. Whether you're green, libertarian, a Democrat in a Republican district or a Republican in a Democratic district, you get no representation in your district. 95% of state legislative and uh, congressional races are not competitive because they gerrymander the seats. So they're safe. So the politicians pick their voters not the voters picking the politicians. And these politicians inherit their seats. They don't earn them. So there's nothing democratic about this. This is why I've been pushing ranked choice voting, where you get rid of the spoiler problem in single seat races like for president, but even more importantly for legislative bodies, ranked choice voting for multi-member districts gives you proportional representation. So if the Greens are a 10% party, we get 10% of the seats. If we're a 20% party, we get 20% of the seats, not zero. 